Marilyn was 70 years old and had lived alone in the suburbs for a long time. She had a beautiful two-story house and a spacious plot of land at her disposal. Marilyn's husband had died ten years earlier, and her three children had become even more estranged from their mother after their father's death. They hoped that their father's money would go immediately to them, but their parents deigned otherwise. Stanford Hills managed to make a fortune in farming. He had a lot of land and machinery, and his own agricultural company. After his death, the sons were already agreed among themselves how to divide his father's wealth. But Stanford and Marilyn knew perfectly well the character of their children, did not intend to squander the fortune. The younger generation of Hills needed only money. They did not want to work for the good of the family. The eldest son, Paul, was in no hurry to look for a job, as long as his parents helped with money. The younger son, Ben, tried to start his own startups, but each new business failed quickly. Their daughter, Megan, did not even think about making money on her own. She was out partying with her friends, driving around the world and living at her own pleasure. Stanford loved his children very much, but then he fell ill and realized that he had no one to leave the business, because the children would simply squander all of his money quickly. After her husband died, Marilyn took over the reins and tried not to react to her son's nagging, who demanded to give them the business completely. The apogee of Marilyn's suffering was a soft-spoken phrase of Ben. I wish she would be gone. The woman was insanely pained to hear it. When Marilyn learned about her terrible diagnosis, she was even glad deep in her heart because she sincerely hoped to meet her beloved Stanford in heaven. And also she was incredibly fed up with her own children, who behaved as real enemies. Marilyn found solace in her assistants, whom she hired immediately after her husband's death. The helper, Helen, fulfilled all her requests, and if she didn't have any, she simply brought Marilyn tea and spoke with her. The girl grew up in a simple family. She was very kind and sympathetic. The gardener, Tom, helped not only to look after the garden, but he also did all the men's work. He fixed, repaired, and built. Tom was brought up without a father, so he had no need to get used to hard work. Marilyn highly appreciated each of them and tried to support the young workers in every way. Everyone became very attached to one another, and sometimes Marilyn felt that only Helen and Tom were her own children. When Marilyn was hospitalized, Helen immediately told her children. She told them the whole truth, the diagnosis, the doctor's prognosis. Paul and Ben sent their mother a speedy recovery. However, Megan even visited her mother. Upon entering the ward, she saw an infirm elderly woman whose vitality was gradually fading. Marilyn was delighted to see her daughter, but she did not stay long and then left, never appearing again. Again, Helen and Tom were by Marilyn's side instead of her children. They felt pity for the elderly woman. They were so used to her that they wanted to weep at the realization that this person was slowly passing into another world. Soon, a notary and the manager of an agricultural company came to see Marilyn. They discussed something with Marilyn for a long time and did not leave until evening. The doctors advised Helen and Tom to prepare for the worst. And so it happened. Helen cried for a long time when she heard the grieving news, and Tom had to take over some of the burial duties. At the funeral, Tom and Megan wept theatrically and wrung their hands. But most of all, they were interested in the inheritance. Who would get the bigger piece? The notary monotonously began to read out Marilyn's last will. Paul, as the eldest son, inherited an apartment in the city. Ben got a house where Marilyn lived her last years. Megan was left with an expensive car and some money. The three of them were dumbfounded. Had their mother donated most of the fortune to charity? Shortly before her death, Marilyn thought about what to do with all the property acquired, and until the last moment she could not decide. On her penultimate night, 
She had a dream about Stanford. He carefully set the table and said that he had been waiting for her. I don't know what to do, darling. Our children are foolish. We brought them up badly, cried Marilyn in her sleep. You have two good children. Leave everything to them. You can't take money with you, laughed Stanford. And then Marilyn woke up. After this dream, she knew what to do and called the notary and the manager on the same day. After the reading of the will, Helen and Tom could not believe that Marilyn had divided the agricultural company equally between them. They were worried where they would look for work after Marilyn left, but the wise woman provided them with work for the rest of their lives. She knew that her and her husband's business would prosper in Tom's hard-working hands and with Helen's wisdom for many years. <laughs>